Welcome. Hi, my name is Zach Yap. I will be discussing the analysis of gravity wave data from atmospheric soundings. We will be going over the process of comparing atmospheric background reading data to gravity wave, um, recorded gravity wave data from a sounding. More specifically, we will be going through the process of identifying gravity waves detected from a launch we at Oklahoma State ha did earlier this year in August. So to gather our uh, gravity wave data, we did weather balloon launches on mornings with clear skies and still winds. Uh, we did a, three launches, one an hour before sunrise to get good baseline data, one during sunrise, and one right after sunrise. Now, the first thing we did once we get that data back in the lab is we put it into some software we developed. Um, the first thing we do is we plot a the U and V components of the wind during the entire flight. We do this so that we can get a range of altitudes where we would expect to find gravity waves. And so that once we have these ranges of altitude, we can try to plot some photographs. Um, we plot these photographs again, based on the U and V components of the wind. And we are looking for plots that are very elliptic because um, gravity waves tend to present themselves in elliptic photograph plots. Another thing we can get from these right now while we're doing this step is we can also get the vertical propagation direction, so up and down. Uh, that we can tell based on the rotation of the photograph as we plot it. Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? Once we have all these uh, gravity waves uh, detected, we can plot all of the photographs at once, so we can just compare them. We can also get the detection altitudes and the propagation direction of each gravity wave. Um, so the graph on the left will show the propagation direction. North is the upward arrow direction. Another thing we can get is the intrinsic frequency, which is denoted by the length of the, the arrows on the left, as well as that second line in the title. Another method we use is the Morley wavelet transform, which takes the U and V components of the wind data and then performs a Morley wavelet transform. From this, we can find the local maxima and minima in the data. And we can we can decide um, we can the next method we use another method that we use sometimes is the Morley wavelet transform in which we take the U and V components of the wind data and perform a Morley wavelet transform. From this, we can find the maxima in the data and a few other parameters from the uh, the U and V components to to determine the locations of possible gravity waves, um, and then we can we can analyze them a bit further using the photograph method. But this process is automated, taking a lot less time than the uh, than the photograph. So for characterizing it, we use wind shear plots. Um, and we're focused on wind shear plots in this case because we anticipate sunrise um, generated gravity waves to be caused by local wind shear. As the uh, sun goes across east to west, it produces a pressure differential, which will cause, which is anticipated to cause a uh, east-west wind. And locations of max wind shear are denoted by those black lines in the graph. So. How do we characterize gravity waves? Here we have two gravity waves that we have detected, and they are both quite elliptic. So we have a, we're pretty confident that they are gravity waves, and we we can get an idea of their detection altitude. So this is six and nineteen. So six is detected about nineteen kilometers and is moving in an easterly direction and wave 19 is at about 25 kilometers moving in a westerly direction. And so if we look at our wind shear plots, 
we see that there is wind shear at about 18 kilometers up and another one at about 24 kilometers. And so that's within the uh, within a couple hundred meters of the wind shear. So we're fairly cert confident that those are gravity waves are generated by wind shear. But because we know that the wind is moving east to west, a sunrise generated gravity wave will most likely propagate in the easterly direction. So gravity wave six, uh, we can say with a little bit of confidence that is probably generated by a sunrise, while gravity wave 19 is probably not. So in conclusion, uh, we need more data. Uh, currently, we only have a small data set, uh, and we have plans to continue to grow this data set by continuing to launch uh, weather balloons. Um, we, anticip we anticipate getting more data to analyze this December as we have a team gearing up to take part in a campaign for the 2020 solar eclipse. Um, their focus is on eclipse gen generated gravity waves, but the process will still be very similar. Questions. Here are a few commonly asked questions that we have answers for. Uh, 